Glory to God. Thanks again for a, another day to share God's Word with all of you that have joined me this morning. It's Friday, and I know everybody's always glad for Friday, and it's going to be a wonderful day. But you know, friends, every day that we live can be a wonderful day. That is, if we submit our days to Him, and we keep our eyes on Him, and don't let the so-called problems and the interruptions, the obstacles and the hindrances that we deal with in life, if we don't let them get the upper hand, but we keep our eyes and we keep our focus on what God not only has done in our life, but what he promises to do, you know, each and every day. You know, the Bible tells us in Psalms 118, this is the day that the Lord hath made. And then he says, I will rejoice and be glad therein. You see him making that declaration, I'm going to rejoice in this day. See, and that's how you turn a seemingly bad day into a good day. You just simply focus on what God said. You know, the way the Lord spoke to me about that verse is he, you know, God, you know, God is, God made every day. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Well, can you imagine God actually making a bad day? God doesn't even have the ability to do something bad. He doesn't have any uh, way to make a bad day. He only knows good. See, he is good. He is love. See, he's mercy. He's grace. He's comforting. All these things are the character, characteristics and nature of God. See, it's not in him to do bad things in any way. You know, the Bible tells us every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. It comes from the Heavenly Father. All good things come from God. It's the devil that's wanting to do evil and bad things in your life. God has no desire to do that. He only desires to bless you like you have only desire to bless your children with good things. So you need to know that today, that God loves you and he has made a way for you to live and, and have a good, a good day every day. You can overcome the obstacles and the hindrances by just focusing on the fact that God made your day and if things are happening to try to disrupt that day, friends, just stay with him. Keep speaking his word over your life, and you'll turn those situations around, and you'll end up with a blessed day, and that you have God's word for that. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Again, like I said, we're going to be sharing the word a little bit a uh, few moments uh, this morning. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining me, especially those of you maybe have never joined before, never watched. Appreciate you doing so. We we'll hope you'll continue to do this. We have this every Tuesday and Friday morning just to be a benefit and a blessing to us with God's Word. I want to talk to you about something today, and we're going to kind of link up with what we shared uh, Tuesday uh, morning in, uh, in our devotion then. We used the verse of Scripture in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, where it says, This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, he hears us. And since we know that he hears us, then we know that whatever we desire of him, when we pray, we will have the petitions that we desired of him. So see, he's talking, he was talking to us then about praying with confidence, having full assurance that he, he, he hears us. He hears us because we're praying in line with God's word. In other words, we have found scriptural basis for praying our prayer. We don't just pray aimlessly. We don't just wander in the dark praying aimlessly. No, we have a purpose. And we go to the Word of God first, and we find out what the Word says. And if we find that it's God's will to do what we're desiring of Him, then we don't pray if it be thy will any longer. We just we pray in faith with confidence, knowing that He hears us and that He's going to grant us our petition. Hallelujah. What a blessed truth that is. So, but I want to read with you today, like I said, linking up with that verse in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. And we're talking about believing for and uh, saving the lost. We're believing that the, our lost loved ones, you know, can be saved and born again. God desires to do that as much or more than you do. He wants your lost family to be born again. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. But he says here in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, 
not willing that any should perish. Do you hear that? Not willing that any should perish. He is so long-suffering and patient that he is not willing for any to perish. And friends, Jesus actually possibly could come back at any time. But friends, Jesus is waiting. He's waiting for people to be born again. He doesn't want people to miss out on on, on the best that could possibly be offered to them. And that is, is spending eternity with the Lord Jesus and our Heavenly Father. But he says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So see, it is God's will that all people be born again. Is everyone going to be saved? Is everyone going to heaven? No, they won't. But that's not because God did not make it available to them. God has brought salvation to every individual on the planet that ever draws a breath of air. But everyone is not going to accept what Jesus did for them and confess him or make them say, make him Savior and Lord of their life. So see, God's not going to keep anybody out of heaven. But a lot of people are simply not going to receive what God has provided for them to be able to go to heaven, see. So it's going to be man that keeps himself out. Never will it be God. But see, we know that saving the lost is God's will. We should know that. And the reason being is because it was, it was that, that's the reason that he laid down his life was to bring salvation to those that don't know him. <clears throat> and of course, none of us knew him. We were all born into sin, see. And our rightful place was to die and to go to hell and live eternity in hell. That because we had a sin nature which would keep us from heaven, keep us from having a close association with our Heavenly Father who knows no sin. But God loved us so much, according to John 3 and 16, he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for the sins of mankind. He took on your sins. He took on my sins. He took on the sins of the world, see? And that's the reason that he came, so that we could be born again and spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. So see, if we know this, then we would never pray something like, Father, God, please save my father. Save my father if it's your will. God, save my mother if it's your will. Or a parent praying for their child and saying, Oh, Lord, save my teenager. Save my, save my daughter, you know, if it be thy will. See, we should never pray that way. Why? Because, friends, we're seeing right here that it is his will. He says right here he's not willing that any should perish, but that all, not some, but that all should come to repentance. It's God's will for everybody to be born again. So see, we should never pray that way. God save them if it be thy will. There is just simply a better way to pray. And, and we know what God's will is. And I hope you're understanding with Tuesday's uh, devotion along with today's. Friends, we need to find out what God's will is before we pray. See, we don't have a biblical foundation for praying a prayer in faith, which for us to receive, we can't do that if we don't know what God's Word says about what we're asking Him or what we're praying about. So we need to know God's will. And remember, God's Word is His will. And it makes, and it, makes it clear again in John 3 and 16 that we just quoted that it is God's will that everybody, every man, every woman, every boy and every girl be saved. Therefore, we can pray for the lost with great boldness. And friends, we can pray We can pray that God would send someone across our loved one's heart, family members that aren't born again. We can pray that God would send someone across their path. You know, if they won't listen to us, sometimes a family member won't listen to another family member in, the, in regards to uh, <clears throat> being born again. But sometimes they'll listen to a stranger or somebody at work or something like that. So see, we can pray with boldness that God would send someone across their, their paths to minister to them. We can pray that their hearts would be tender, you know, and open to receive the truth when it was shared with them. We can pray that the Holy Spirit would convict them of their sins and the life that they're living estranged from God, see. And you can pray this prayer with boldness, see. And the reason you can do that is because of what we found out last Tuesday when he says this is the confidence that we have in him. 
confidence, assurance. This is the confidence. This is the assurance that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, then we know he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So see, the confidence is praying when you have a biblical basis, you have found scripture to support what you're praying for. When you've done that, then you can have confidence and assurance that he hears you when you pray. And you can know that you're going to receive, you're going to, he's going to grant you the petitions that you desiring of him. So see, we can pray that way. And friends, when you've prayed that way, then friends, stop asking God to save them. Stop, ask, stop praying about that and start thanking God for what he's done. See, if you prayed in faith and you, you're trusting God, you, you know that God heard you and you know it's, God's not, it's not God's will for that they perish. It is God's will that they come to repentance. So the Holy Spirit is going to be convicting them so you can just start thanking God for their salvation. Thank God for sending someone across their path. Thank God for opening their heart and making their heart tender to receive the ministry of the word and that they will be hungry and want a change in their life. And just thank God every day throughout the day, as often as you think about that family member, thank God that they are born again by faith in Jesus' name. And friends, you can, you can bring your entire family into the household of God that way. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen in a week or a month or a year. But if you will continue to pray in faith, you know, because the devil's going to do everything he can to keep that from happening. But you just keep praying, or not keep praying, but you keep thanking him. You've already prayed, see? So now you're thanking him because you know he heard you, and he's going to grant you the petition. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I hope I haven't rushed through this this morning for time's sake. If you get a chance, listen to it again, and, and just uh, let God give you revelation of this verse of Scripture along with what we shared last Tuesday as well. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you and as many as possible uh, this Sunday. Friends, I'm telling you, we have been having some dynamic services on Sunday morning. The presence of God has been so strong. And he's just, he is just ministering to us and his presence again. It's just, it's just blessing us in words that I can't say. So you don't want to miss out on that. And you can't get that by watching on a, a TV or watching it on uh on a, a computer monitor, it's just, you, you can't get that same presence, you know, so it, it's just different when you're there in person. So I just want to encourage you, be with us if any way possible this Sunday. God bless you today.